13 September 2023, Wednesday, MAO with Cal. No rate hike for September. Well, apparently I've been calling for rate hike for September, but now Nick come out and says that there likely be no rate hike. And being a mouthpiece of Federal Reserve, obviously he will be right. So, well, I'm wrong. But does it mean that that will be good for market? No, I don't think so. In fact, it's that this could be harsh for the market. I'll tell you more in detail. Now, traders are actually hedging for a 10% correctional move. Is it because they know something or it's just a hedge? So let me tell you more with more information right now. And do note, US crude has really hit 90, nearly $90 per barrel. This is crazy. So disclaimer apply as usual. And thank you, Ames, for the kind sponsorship. Now, first of all, let's talk about Apple first. Now, Apple could be heading down. Yes, Apple. Now, Apple is trading at about 176 yesterday. Now, well, everybody is waiting for iPhone 15 to come out and it have came out. Well, I would say that it's okay. The, the look is, looks okay. But it didn't create any, you know, big wave. In fact, as a matter of fact itself, right, the aftermarket sales you can see right now is pretty flat. I'll tell you that. So this is not normal for Apple share. Whenever Apple, what, Apple 10 to Apple 14, whenever they come, they launch it, we do see the stock price goes higher, right? But don't know, last time itself, the share price actually comes down first. Then when the launch came out, the share price goes up. But this time around, you notice that the share price has came down before the launch. So something is actually not going correct. And if you look at it right now, if Apple share, it has to stay about 170 because if not, the market will have some big, big issue here. So 170, uh, this level here at 170 must hold water, all right? If not, the next breakdown could be as low as 162 and that will definitely affect the entire NASDAQ. So traders, please watch out for this for Apple, yeah? All right, moving along. Now, Nick. Now, Nick is the chief economist correspondent for the Wall Street Journal and is based in Washington. Most important, he's responsible for covering the Federal Reserve and other major development in the U.S. economic uh, policy. So in short itself, he is a direct mouthpiece for the Federal Reserve. So now he is actually saying this. A pause, a rate pause in September will give the Fed more time to see if recent progress continues so seriously it's all right and this guy said something before the meeting we all know that very high chance this is what the ferris will do and based on what's happening right now there's something to note yeah if they really pause for september then there'll be a harder look at whether there are more to be needed and don't forget jerome power said there should be two or more rate hike for this year so if they miss november they miss september there's going to be an issue because right look at it right now we are eight days away from the fomc meeting and the thing is this, the market, the Wall Street has priced in. Okay, take a look here. All right, there's some animation. Okay, take a look. Now, this is 20 September. Apparently, 93% of Wall Street boys are all expecting a status quo. So we have one, two, two more rate hike for this year. I mean, so a two more FOMC meeting for this, this year. If let's say September, we are not going for that. So are you telling me now they will definitely do a rate hike in November and December? Well, if they do that, is it because they know something that the inflation is not going to be, uh, it's going to climb higher? So all these are very important things to take note because I, I really can't see why there's a rate pause now because to me, it's, all, it's just kicking a can down the alley. But you look at it right now for November numbers, there are 44.3% of the people are looking for a rate high. So the, the thing is this, if they really do that, that means that my 6% for this year target is still going to be met. Because if they do a rate hike in November, they'll give them 5.5 to 5.75. And they do one more rate hike in 13th December, they'll give them 5.75 to 6. So that will basically come to my 6% target. So it is still possible if you really ask me that. But then 6% is up by the end of the year. I think that will send the market, especially the bank share, into a very, very precarious positioning. Why is that so? Let's take a look at the numbers right now. You see, what is happening right now is that the dollar yen itself, right, yesterday fell because of a, a Uida a command. Now, what he said was that uh, he says that there's a possibility of ending the developed world uh, last key negative interest rate. So if that happens, so that will pressure back the US dollar, which happened. And of course, the key point is this, the BOJ turned to its loan for bonds program to curb rising yield after the 10-year government benchmark jump and continue to age up to 0.705%. Now, this is the highest level since 2013. So that means that, right, the borrowing cost it's going to increase for those who did that. So a lot of people may actually consider to dump the US stock market so that they can repay. 
this is actually a very high possibility because a lot of people borrow from the Japan BOJ, the low interest rate to buy the US equity. But now the US equity market itself is not moving. Then of course itself with the rate going up, they may switch it around and sell US equity for this. So this is why I'm saying that that could be a pullback in the near term. So from here itself, you can see the 10 year yield has really shot to this um, 0 0.705 level. This is really the highest since 2013. This is not a joking matter because this every dollar itself is going to pay at a high rate and this is not going to be fun, right? So you look at it right now, the Japan Nikkei itself is also facing some form of resistance. Now, recently when Nikkei went up itself, we know that Jordan Buffett and friends have been buying the buying the, uh, the all this Japanese broking company, hence therefore the Nikkei rises. But recently itself, since June this year, you can see that it's steadily coming down. And of course, this could actually trade lower and this may come down to um, somewhere about the MA30 level, and that is somewhere around 32,400. Now it's at 32,800. So let's hope it stays there. If not, it's all right. The market may fall, and there is a possibility for the Nikkei to come down to about 31,000. And that means that it's off like a thousand. Um, for 700 points from here to so likelihood we see the US market down by at least 2 to 5%, right? So this is the technical side, but the more important thing is the fundamental. Now, the bank in US just saw their biggest weekly deposit outflow, oh my goodness, since the collapse of SVB. Now, total bank deposit on seasonal adjusted basis plunged by $70 billion, right, last week alone. Now, this put us back to the lowest level since May. And if this will continue itself, how can you tell me the bank crisis is really over? In fact, it's all right. The unrealized gains and losses, oh my goodness, look at it. This is crazy, guy. This is so deep inside rate. So if this is going to continue itself, right, even though the Fed and emergency bank funding facility uh, is there, but you can see now it has jumped by 328 million last week. So this is a new record, $108 billion, even though everybody is saying that the regional bank crisis is over. So what is wrong here itself, guys? This can break the market. So if they continue to rate high itself to November and December, back to back, I think the selling will come pretty fast because if you tell me that um, September, there's no rate high. And last two rate, last there'll be two rate high coming in. I will start to press further. The yield will go higher. And of course, then that will be more problem for the banks. So all this tells me that, right, traders may begin to take profit from now onwards. And there's something that I've been saying, September and October, that could be a pullback. And this is something that I'm watching very closely. And of course, right now, being correct has this problem because why the US crude now? The US crude is trading at 88.79. Now, last night, crude oil hit... 88, 79, and in fact, brand crude went even higher. So what happened is that brand crude went to one up by 142 to $92 per barrel. And the West, uh, West Texas Intermediate, they went up by to $88.84. Now, this is really incredible. Now, a lot of people calling and screaming for overboard, but you must understand that we have a problem. US SPR is still at the low. So which means that the US had to do something, right? Okay, they can choose not to do anything. But if let's say the crude oil price keep going higher, then what happened? All right, one thing is that of course US can basically now try to um, call, call give a call to Saudi and then to do something to do itself if not things may happen. But what if the Saudi decided to retaliate against this? Which of course we know that the prince himself is not an easy guy to negotiate. So this is where it get crazy, guys. The gasoline prices right now in US is at 393.94, okay, per, per gallon, yeah? And we all know that in October 2022, that was the last high at $4. But don't forget, the reason why the 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 um the gas came down was because of US dumping their reserve to bring it down. So now the problem is that the reserve have been dumped, yet the market has recovered to where it started. Oh my goodness. So what, dump again? Now, if they do dump again and sell, the market will buy heavily because the market will know that it's just a matter of time, US has to come out and buy again. So that's the reason why now a lot of people are short squeezing the America government, if you ask me. And of course, does it affect anybody? Well, of course, indeed, look at this. This is the medium home prices right now. And it's contracting at a level 
The last two times we saw it is in 1970 and 2008. Take a look, guys. Now, these are not plucked from the air. These are all numbers and facts and figures from the relevant um, entities and government official numbers. And you can see that when we come to this point, so at minus 6 to minus 7, the last time we saw in 1970, we have a recession. And after that, in 2008, we have a recession. And now where we are, we are at the same level. So that means that we are not too far away from a recession. So all these are telling us that the next two, three months, the market is going to get into a very precarious position. And of course, right now, we are not the only ones saying this because although the analysts, the, the, the experts are calling that there's no more recession or with soft lending, but they say one thing, but they do something else. Take a look. The SPDR, S&P 500 ETF, they are actually buying to hedge against their position. And the cost of it is 10% drop. Oh my goodness. So they are actually buying in anticipation that something may happen. All right. So of course, they this will be a hatch. But why would you want to hatch something when you know that the market is recovering? Or unless you know that something is wrong. So that's the reason why this is actually another telltale sign that we have to be careful. Because the last time we saw this as well was back in... Um, June, the market came off a little bit, remember? So again, all this tells us that we have to be watching out for the market. All right, so all I can say is this, many analysts are thinking that the earning recession is over, but again and again, we saw it in 2008, whereby when the earnings had to go, uh, earnings revision goes up, right? But you can see the six month leading indicator is going down. Can you see that the difference is divergence here? We are actually having a little bit of the similarities back in 2008. So that means that now people are revising the earnings will go higher, but the leading indicators are going lower and the cost and inflation are high. So don't you realize that well? somehow somewhere is wrong because whenever we see this, whereby it basically goes in a different direction, right? we know that something big is going to happen. So my bet here is pretty clear that once the market realizes that the earnings is not able to basically follow uh, true, then of course things can get bad. And that's the reason why when an Apple shares come off, right, due to their earnings itself, despite their, this iPhone 15 launching, right, this actually tells you seriously itself that earnings in the next three months, the next six months across the board ain't going to be good. And of course, look at the Dow Jones right now. Last night, you can see that it actually... Um, he actually got itself uh, restricted at the MA30 level. It formed a strong doji yesterday. Now we've seen it before, right? Right here itself, it's called, we call it as BMB, big movement bar. And then the market came down by about 400 points. So if you ask me itself, right? Tonight's CPI data, right? Likelihood will be coming the same figure. Likelihood the same figure. And of course, it is because probably they're going to massage this. But we all know that right now, the crude oil price is getting higher and higher every day. So that means that the high chance of market will believe that this CPI data may see even 4.0 next month. So if all this happens itself and they're not going to hide interest rate for this month, then this is going to pressure the Dow downwards, okay? People will not be dumb. They will be basically thinking that, telling themselves, why hold the baby, right? So there's a good chance the Dow might come back down to 34,000 in state itself. So this is my personal take. Of course, we can take this as a from a guide. Nothing's 100%, but you look at my TWB system itself, right? Have a very interesting view. Now, apparently itself, right? The last two days, we can see there's some buying effort from the boys, but the momentum itself is actually selling. So with today's a DJDD, today likely to be a directional day. So I'm going to say upfront, the upside target itself will be at 34,941. The downside itself, minimally, will be 34,548. But if you ask me, right, I'm looking at 34,529 to 34,461. That it will be my view for now. And if the market really does that as well, right, we have a problem because the last few days, the market has been, KSI has been up, have been down, meaning the boys have been selling. So if the market do break down as well, right, we can really see 34,300 to as low as 34,000 in the near term. So all these numbers you have to watch, all right? So my view is very simple. I believe that today's CPI data will be coming out 36 to the most 3.7. But then the market will speculate that the next CPI data will be even higher. And of course, with no rate high this time, that means they're going to pressure that next month as well will be a 25 basis point. And who knows, they may even speculate a 50 basis point. And if that happens as well, the market is going to sell. All right. Hope you like my video. Subscribe and share with your friends. It's Kel signing off. Take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.